Hey everybody, what's going on? So, I would like to welcome you to a shop in northern Vermont called Quality Metal Products. They're what's called a metal fabrication business. What they do is they make handrails, or those big gray beams we see in the back of our classroom. Those are made in a metal fabrication. It's called Metal Fab. What we're going to do here today is the gentleman that runs this place, his name is Ken, he's allowed me to come in and weld and show you the flow of electrons and how that can change things. We're going to be using electricity here. Remember, electricity is one of those six types of energy. Electricity is one of those, and it's the flow of electrons. You could do some pretty amazing things with just flowing electrons. You could power your smartphone. You could power the camera that's in front of me right now. We can melt metal. We can make light. We can send a ship to Mars, to the moon, all on electrical energy. We're now starting to power our cars with them. So we're going to go over what welding is, how it works, a little bit about circuits, and how we use electricity here. So you will have to learn some words. There are some questions to answer. There are some things to write down, but you'll be okay. We'll go through these things slowly and together. You'll get to see the power of welding and how things work together and how we can melt metal and basically make lava in front of our eyes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're looking at here is actually a MIG welder. And this big green tank in the back is argon gas. If you remember from our chemistry unit, argon gas is a noble gas. So it doesn't react with anything. What this does is it actually shoots a stream of argon gas out through this gun. And when I talk about gun, I'm talking about this thing right here. This is the actual welding gun that I put to the metal and this is where the electricity comes out. So, these are what I've welded together. You can see a weld right here. And what that is, is that's actually molten metal that has hardened to adhe adhere these two things together. So this is what welding does. If you take a look at the machine, you can set all these dials to different temperatures and how fast you want to weld or how hot or cold, anything like that. So what this is, is one giant circuit. We're gonna call this big red machine our battery. And then what happens is to create a circuit, we need a ground. This is our ground. So what we have here is a circuit of a welding machine. If you look here at the welding machine, that's that big red machine I was showing you. It puts out electrons through this wire, goes through here, then when they get to this gun, it creates an arc. It's like lightning jumping from this gun into that metal because they're both conductors, so they both like electricity. What's happening is that lightning or that electricity is so hot and so bright that it's melting the metal right here. It's doing work. It's changing something. So that energy is doing work on these two pieces of metal. What that work is, is they're melting the two pieces of metal together so that they're almost glued together. But in any electrical circuit, it needs to create a cycle. And what happens, the electricity still flows through that lightning, into the metal, through the ground cable, that little clamp I was showing you earlier, and then back into the machine. Electrical circuits are cycles. That's why they're called a circuit. It cycles through. It circles through and through. All right, hey everybody. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of welding. I'm gonna do it behind this piece of steel so the light actually doesn't blow out the camera. What we have here is I have my little welding gun. This is where the electricity comes out of. So what's happening is the electricity is coming out of this bad boy, going through the gun, into the metal. Remember, metal is a good conductor. It allows electrons to flow freely through it. So the electrons are flowing through here, into here, causing molten metal. But the electricity still goes through, goes into this metal table, goes into this ground wire, which is connected to the table, and then the ground brings it back into this machine. Remember, a circuit has to be a loop. It circles, it cycles around. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna weld down here. This way you get to see how bright things are going. You're gonna see sparks shooting everywhere. You're gonna see light come off. 
but you will not see what we call the bead or the actual area where it melts the metal because it's too bright for the camera. It'll blow out all the sensors. So I have to wear my darkening helmet so what happens is I can be up close and it won't blind me. I'm also wearing long sleeves because what can happen is this light is so bright, it'll give you a sunburn. Also, if molten metal pops out of here, it'll actually burn you too. You don't want that to happen. So, watch the light, see what happens, and it's a pretty cool thing. And there we go. All right, so what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna do some welding. And I wanna show you how much heat and light is emitted from here. So what I have is I have my nice little Pepsi bottle filled with water. I'm gonna weld for a second, heat this up, then I'm gonna pour some water on it and we'll see what happens. So, as you can see, there's a lot of heat right here. All this water is instantly boiling. You can see all the steam and everything come off. Okay, so what we have here is a nicely drawn circuit of what's happening. Here you see the battery. A battery is anything that gives off electricity. We don't have to think of like a Duracell or an energizer. So what's happening is the electrons are moving out of the battery. They're following along here. This would be our gun. And then this is where the metal is, where the two pieces of metal. And when those two are connected with a big bolt of electricity, what happens is we see heat and light come out. That's what you saw when we welded those two things together. But the electricity still flows through that metal. Not all of it though, this is called a resistor. Where things resist, you can also put a light bulb here and that's why light shines off. And the same thing with a light bulb, heat and light will be emitted. But then some of the electricity still goes through and cycles around. That's why with a battery, you always have to connect the positive and negative ends. And with a cycle like this, it's actually the electrons that are moving. The flow of electrons. Remember that from when we talked about energy. Okay, so now that we've done our demonstration on welding and all that fun stuff of melting metal and making lava, we have to talk about three words. The first word we're going to talk about is current. And current is actually the flow of electrons and how fast the electrons are flowing through a circuit. You could think of this as like a stream or a river. A small little stream, not very fast current, little water, not that much. But then you can think of the Amazon, which has a lot of water going really quickly. The currents are different. So the current is the flow of the electric charge. These are measured in amps or amperes. Okay, the second word we gotta talk about is volts or voltage. And voltage is actually the difference in electrical potential energy. So the key word in there is potential energy. So think of a waterfall, a very, very tiny waterfall, not that much potential energy. There's not a lot of area for things to fall. But a very, very tall waterfall, like Niagara Falls, yeah, the water on top has a lot of potential energy. Just like in batteries. If we have a small little 9-volt battery, not that much energy. So a little battery would be a tiny little waterfall. This big red bad boy here is like Niagara Falls. A lot of voltage, a lot of potential energy. One of the other key things about voltage is about how much work it can do. Remember, work is when you're changing something. When we put energy into something, we're doing work. 
When I put energy into this table, I push the table. I'm doing work on it. It actually did a little bit of work pushing me back too. But with voltage, the higher the voltage, the more work it can do. Okay, third word, final word is power. This one is when we talk about, oh, the power went out or anything like that. This is the rate at which energy is delivered. More power, more change. So like I said, voltage causes a change. The faster we make that change, the more power it has. We see power as a change. Power is the rate of change. So if we change something very, very quickly, we're putting a lot of power into it. If we change it not so fast, not as much power. Think about when someone's punching you in the arm. If they sit there and kind of just nudge you a little bit, not a lot of change, not very fast. But if someone takes a Mike Tyson punch at you and you fall to the ground, a lot of power because it's a lot of change very quickly. And power is actually what we call I times V or current times voltage. So we went over current, we went over voltage. When you have current and voltage, you can find out how much power is being done. So right here, we have 215 amps, which is the current, and our voltage is 20.4. So to figure out power, you need to do 215 times 20.4. So, we calculated out power. If you calculated this out correctly, you should almost get about 4,300. That is a lot. So, when we start talking about this, there's a term we have to use. Remember our scientific notation, our scientific names that we use, like meter and joule and all those things. We now have to come up with one for power. And that's actually one you guys know. Can anybody think of it? It is actually called the watt or wattage. So 4,300 watts of electricity. A light bulb in the ceiling is about 12 watts. 